Hi everyone! Uh, first, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a successful upcoming New Year. Now, let's dive into this model. So, first I'm gonna start with the inspiration. Uh, this model had several inspirations, but it all started when I saw the photographs of the upcoming, or let's say already released, a Bugatti Bolaid, 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 I don't know how to say it exactly. Basically, it's the yellow and uh, black car of uh, an upcoming car with the V69 engine and so on. So I was looking at it and I was comparing it to the real one and I was like, wait, the real, the real one has all-wheel drive while the Lego representation only has rear-wheel drive. So is there a way I can make a 1 to 16, 15 stud with model that has all wheel drive. So I went and fiddled around in Lego Digital Designer and I indeed found a way to put front wheel drive with steering into this with in this scale. Uh, and that was the first step. The second step was uh, finding a way to place more than just one drive motor in such a small model and I was trying all kinds of motor orientation positions put one motor in the front for front wheel drive put another for the rear for the rear wheel drive uh, spin them all kinds of ways and then in the end I basically used the same orientation as I did with the Bowie's uh, mod which, where I'm using one motor that is driving the rear wheels directly but in my case I'm using two motors and they're driving also the rear wheels directly, but one for each side. So left motor is driving left wheels, right motor is driving right wheels. And then they are also driving this differential here. Now this differential then uh, drives this axle via these U-joints and then drives the front differential. Now this way I can have a vector electronic differential steering on the rear. And the front uh, is uh, driven with differential. So they get an average of speed which is driving the front wheels. Uh, this way I have the way to control the way the car behaves in the corners and I have all the, the wheels in the front also driven and of course steered. The steering angle is around 22 degrees something like that. It's enough for a uh, scale. Now Another thing that uh, people were asking me, why am I using the big differential, the strong reinforced version in the front and the normal one in the rear? Well, the fact that I'm using the stronger differential in the front doesn't have to do anything with the torque. There isn't so much torque going to the front wheels that the differential would skip or anything like that. It has to do with the fact that this differential is offset by half a stud because the CV joints uh, you can put an axle one and a half stud deep inside them and if I were to use normal differential centered here that will leave uh, half a stud uh, of space for the axle to slide out of differential and into the CV joint and this way I would lose the front wheel drive and by offsetting the differential by half a stud I can increase the length of the axle by one stud and this one stud is then split half a stud in one CV joint I will start the other CV joint and this way the axles cannot slip out of the differential and this way the front wheel drive is much more reliable and there is nothing to basically fail here. As I mentioned before, I am using two motors for driving the rear wheels and this gives me ability to affect how the car behaves while cornering and this is what I'm going to show you in the following video. So I just decided I'm gonna use this top floor because there is literally not a soul here to demonstrate how you can affect the performance of the car, the steering, with the software. So basically because I have one motor for each rear wheel, I can do differential steering and I'm gonna show you how the, how the uh, track steer module affects the performance of the car. So if I set the steering factor to zero, so at zero, both motors will give the will have the same power when steering. And what happens is just when I steer, 
and give it gas the car understeers it's very visible here when it's slippery you see the car just understeers let's try again so I'm steering completely to the left the car just doesn't steer at all okay and now let's try and set the steering module factor to a bit higher come on logic modules let's set it to 0 0.20 which means that the inner motor will be uh, some 20% uh, slower than the outer motor when steering so let's see what happens now so I'm steering all the way to the left and now the car oversteers you see so now I'm making literally four wheel drive uh, burnout And now I'm gonna set it as the way I had it before, which was 10% by default, because I learned during previous testing that this is the most optimal. So it's the most optimal between oversteer and understeer. So the car should now try to follow a curve. So let's move it a bit backwards. Now let's set it to steer. You see? It's somewhere between understeering and oversteering. Because it's quite slippery here, it of course it doesn't apply to all surfaces. But it just goes to show that simply by selecting uh, and adjusting the uh, skid steering module, truck steering module, you can adjust the way the car behaves when driving on uh, different surfaces. I'm gonna make a few clips. So in the footage you can easily affect how the car behaves especially when cornering by adjusting the track steer module you can make it oversteer you can make it understeer or if you are really good and adjust it just right you can find the middle ground which is the best where the car is not oversteering too much not understeering too much it's kind of following a curve where it's the most controllable and it's a really good example of how software can actually affect how the physical car behaves. Now when it, also, uh, when it comes to performance there's also the point that this small car has enough torque to spin all four wheels and it also has enough power to reach a really high top speed which I will show next.
So this little car can reach over 17 kilometers an hour, which I think is a record at this small scale for now. And I'm really proud of that. Uh, I'm really happy how fast it goes, how much power it has, and the way it behaves. Uh, I think uh, I think performance is no issue. Now another thing I wanted to sh uh, also talk about is the styling. I decided to use grey color instead of lime of the original because grey color is very rarely used in Lego Technic. I think Sena used a bit of grey in the front but I don't recall many models using it as a primary color and I think it just looks a bit more mature than using the bright colors and another reason I'm using grey is because it allowed me to hide the motor here much better there is no way to put a normal panel here, so I had to use uh, this trapezoid panel. And the, because the panel and everything around it is grey color, uh, it helped me hide the motor much better here. Now, I also wanted uh, some other colors because this is supposed to be a GT kind of style model. So I also used the red, white and blue as other colors to give it a bit more life. And it's also a nice way to <laughs> kind of hide the blue pins and the red pins and red axles and things like that. So I think it uh, came out really nice and I uh, also took some creative choices, uh, Liberty in the front. I'm using these two panels to make it uh, look a bit more aggressive. I removed the fenders uh, piece here. I added a panel on the side here and in the rear this uh, really large diffuser actually serves a double function it is also holding the buoy's brick in place here so it's holding the buoy's brick so not the so that the entire weight of the buoy's brick is not just held by these two half beams but also by the diffuser and finally because this is supposed to be a gt gta whatever kind of a race car there is a large spoiler in the back which makes it look very competitive, very aggressive. So I'm really happy with the way the car turned out, both aesthetically and performance-wise. Now, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. There is no perfect thing in life except maybe cats. Um, there uh, are some things that I probably could and would and will improve with the future versions. Now, the things that uh, are not, let's say, ideal, are the following. First is the way the weight is set up uh, in the model. So basically the rear has a lot of weight. The center of gravity is very far in the back, which means that when you're accelerating or steering, there is not much weight on the front wheels. So they have to work extra hard to actually affect the way the car is driving, so that's why the uh, track steering module is very, so very important here because there is so much weight on the rear axle that actually affecting the way the rear is driven can affect the steering much better than actually steering the front wheels. So in the future I will try to move the buoy's brick or something more in the front, have a different body that will allow me that to set the weight to be more evenly placed around the model. Another thing that also is a bit of a problem is that the front wheels are only held with the one uh, stud uh, here at the CV joint. So basically they are only... only this axle is holding the front wheels and if you're driving really fast or if you're hitting stuff or the wheel starts vibrating it will eventually slide out and fall fall off and one way to fix that would to be use uh, would be to use the new CV joints which have a longer axle and then use like a bush or a piece like this uh, over it just to keep the front wheel from sliding off also the rear wheels even though I use lots of bushes here there is it can happen that the axle eventually slides out just enough for the 
gear to disengage and once you disengage the gear in the back in the differential you lose the front wheel drive so there are a few things that I can and I will try to improve in the next version and also another thing that I would like to do for the next version is also use the white tires in the front because I think the white tires have much more uh, they are much softer than the front the thin ones and I think that would improve the steering performance much better um, it would improve the steering performance a lot so that's um, in the future so basically improve the rear wheel drive improve the front wheel drive put four of the same tires on all four corners and just make it perform ever so better and of course shift the weight so it's more balanced front and rear so it doesn't have a heavy ass on this one has <laughs> so yes but I think since this is my first version of a 1 to 16 all wheel drive motorized model I think it came out really well I'm really proud how it turned out and I like it and if you like it then please uh, subscribe, like and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and again I wish you all the best and have a good one. Bye bye! Yeah, so I was just recording the launch and the car kind of crashed. It's my first actual serious crash. The car crashed into the thing here. And yeah, that came out quite interesting. <laughs> oh, look. There's a leaf inside here. Ah, can't get it out. It's a leaf from uh, driving outdoors. And yeah, that was quite a nice crash. Basically, you can see the front wheel <laughs> just deforming. So yeah, that happens. <laughs>